Welcome to lecture 26. We will study the concept of equilibrium and balance in this chapter. So what do we mean by equilibrium? Equilibrium in physics means that there are no net force on an object. So if you think about a box and you have multiple forces acting on it, so on like that, then if all these forces add up to give you a net force of zero, then we say that the object is in equilibrium. This means that in every direction the force is balanced. So in the x direction all the forces sum, all the x forces sum to zero, and as well as in the y direction all of the y forces sum to zero meaning these are the causes of acceleration so if there is no net force in either directions there is no net acceleration in either direction meaning there is no net total acceleration that's what happens when we have equilibrium in a linear sort of motion however what does equilibrium mean for angular or rotational motion well, we know that rotational motion will have rotational acceleration for any unbalanced torque for, or for any net torque. For any object rotating around any axis, uh, let's think about a seesaw, and it is being balanced in the middle. If this seesaw is not rotating either this way or that way, it's not rotating, so that's the, what the cross st is uh, standing for. That means that there is no net torque causing any rotation, either clockwise or counterclockwise. This means that since there is no cause for any rotation, then there is no angular acceleration around any axis. So this is what equilibrium means for rotational motion. So in general, for equilibrium, there is no net force on an object and there is no net torque that any force is causing okay around any axis then from equilibrium we have an important concept of balance that we use every day in our lives okay for two objects in contact balance occurs when the center of mass of that object is over a point of contact let's think about two books one on top of each other so we have a smaller book on top of a bigger book and this is these are the center of masses of the book now if the if we draw out uh, so what is what is the point of the center of mass well center of mass is a point through which we also sometimes call the center of mass center of gravity meaning weight the force called weight that is the attraction the, or the force of gravity that is that we feel due to our mass weight acts through center of gravity or center of mass therefore through this point on of the book we have the weight acting downward let's call that this book has a mass of m1 this book has a mass of m2 so this is the weight m1g this is the weight m2g of the bigger book now the top book is on is in balance with the uh, book below it because the center of mass is just above the point of contact between the top book and the lower book if you apply a force on this upper book slight force called f1 or something and then it so happens that the pos uh, let's change colors here it uh, so happens that the book moves a slight distance so the green is the new uh, position of the book then the center of mass will actually move with the book because it is physically part of the book now we see that the new center of mass or the center of gravity through which the weight is acting is not over any point of contact so when the book is in the green position it will topple right so it is no longer in balance therefore similarly for the second or lower book mass 2 the center of mass is here 
and it is just over the point of contact with the ground right therefore the since the ground is a very very uh, big or long object uh, if you move f1 if you move this book giving a force f2 and you move this book this way to the right it doesn't really change its balance with the ground because no matter how much to the right it moves the center of mass or the center of gravity of this lower book is always over the point of contact with the ground so the second book is always the lower book that is is always in balance with the ground however the upper book because it is in contact with the lower book you can affect its balance by applying a force so that the center of mass will move away from its point of contact all right so that is what balance is now there are different types of equilibrium one we have stable equilibrium two we have unstable equilibrium and three is neutral equilibrium stable equilibrium is hard to disturb so if you think about this big book on the ground if you keep applying a horizontal force you are not affecting its balance because the center of mass is always over a point of contact with the ground right so this is an example of uh, uh, this is uh, an example of balance that we have just seen so how does it apply to these different types of equilibriums well when what is stable equilibrium considering this uh, this block well this book or sorry this book uh, well this book if you say if you apply a force that causes it to rotate in this direction right so you have applied a force like that let's call it F and that caused the book to go to turn right it went from the crown here and turned to a slightly different position now if you let go this is the center of mass of the book now it is in it is still over a point of contact with the ground that means it is still in balance right this thing is still in balance so if you let go if you let go of this force if you cancel out the force then the book will just fall back to its original position here this kind of th this kind of uh, situation where it is hard to disturb the balance by applying a force that causes it to rotate but then when you release it the book goes back to its original position this is stable equilibrium okay you can also think of stable equilibrium being like an elastic band if you stretch it with a small force but then you let it go it comes back to its original length so that is something called stable equilibrium it is hard to change the shape or the length of the elastic band unless a big force is applied okay what is unstable well if you apply a big enough force and then such that such that uh, let's draw a better one here um, such that this is the ground and we have the book but the book is just in contact with the ground at this point the center of mass is not over a point of contact meaning this is if you release the force that caused it to go in that direction let's call this f2 if you release the force f2 then there is a big enough chance that it will not return to its original position rather it will topple over then that is called unstable position okay uh, and then we have neutral or uh, neutral stable uh, neutral equilibrium which is an example or like this if you keep applying a horizontal force on this book and you keep moving it to the right on the ground well then the center of mass is always over the point of contact so its equilibrium is not uh, affected in any way this is an example of neutral equilibrium okay all right now let's look at some examples Right. In this example, we have a board with a uniform mass density balanced by support. Now, what is uniform mass density? Uniform mass density means that the center of mass uh, is at the center of the object. Okay. 
So the mass is distributed uniformly and the center of mass is at the right at the center of the object. So in this case, the board. All right, so this is like a seesaw and two children are sitting on it. One has a weight of 500 newtons and the other has a weight of 350 newtons. The kid with the weight 500 newtons sits 1.5 meters from the center or from the support. Uh, this is also called a pivot. And the other child sits, uh, sits somewhere on that side because our goal is to see which, uh, what position is actually attaining balance. And the given to us is also the weight of the board, which is 40 newtons. First, what is the force which uh, the support exerts? Since two things are in contact, the plank and the support, they will exert forces on each other. I want uh, to know what the force that the pivot or the support is exerting on the board. And also the second part of the question is where should the 350 Newton child sit to balance the board, all right? So every, every equilibrium problem is either solving uh, Newton's second law for linear motions, for example, so F equals MA, or uh, rotational motion, that is something to do with torque or something to do with F. Since first part of the problem is asking us about force exerted by the support or the pivot, we can't start our problem without drawing free body diagram. So let's do that. Let's draw a free body diagram for the board because we want the force which support exerts. So support is exerting force on the board, so we want the free body diagram for the board itself. All right. So let's say this is the board. What are the forces on it? Uh, from the center of mass, which is at the center for this uh, plank or board because it has uniform mass density, we have its weight acting vertically downwards, so 40 newtons. What else do we have? Uh, we have the 500 newton child sitting here. So the child exerts a force of 500 newtons on the board from this position. 500 newtons and let's say that this distance is given to us to be 1.5 meters from the center of uh, center of mass of the board or the support and also the pivot is placed at the center of mass and it will exert an upward force right and let, that will be the normal force so let's call it n the normal force the pivot exerts on the board and the other child sits somewhere here and we don't know where exactly she sits so let's go let's say that this is where she sits and she exerts a force of 350 newtons her weight on the board and we don't know what this uh, what this uh, length is so we can just call it some x okay all right then that is our free body diagram and we missed one thing that is we we didn't denote which direction to which is be positive so since all of the forces are vertical all we care about is a vertical positive direction let's choose it to be upward now let's solve the problem what is the force which the support exerts on the board well this is a situation in balance right so the board is balanced by the support balance means as we have learned all the forces on it sum to zero so all of the forces are vertical so all of the vertical forces on the plank will sum to zero for there to be balance. Therefore, we can solve this equation by just summing these forces correctly. A positive n minus 500 minus uh, 40 minus 350. All of the y forces with correct signs will sum to give me zero. Then we can solve for n and you, can, you will end up with a force of the size 890 newtons all right that is the what the pivot or the support exerts on the plank or the board for the second part of the problem we want to know where should the child of 350 newton weight sit to balance the board so where should she sit for which there will be no disturbance of the balance another condition of the the main condition of balance is that something doesn't topple over right so toppling means something doesn't so balance is retained if something doesn't go either clockwise or counterclockwise if something doesn't rotate about an axis that means 
we want a situation where the torques the net torque on the board is zero right so what are the forces that cause uh, torque well we don't know because first we have to ask ourselves about which axis are we considering our torque let's say we are considering the torque about the center of mass so right at the center for this board all right so we consider torque around this point now what are the forces that are acting on the board we have one two three and four forces acting on the board now will all the forces cause a torque about center of mass no because not all of the forces have a distance away from the center or from the support or the rotational axis if you remember torque is defined as the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the distance away from the center of rotation or the axis of rotation times the angle sine of the angle between f and r so the force and the line joining the force and the balancing or pivot point or the hinge or the axis of rotation okay so what are those forces that will not cause any torque Forty newton the weight of the board that acts through the center of mass will not cause any torque because for this 40 newton force r is zero because there is no distance no distance between the force of 40 newtons and the position or the axis we have chosen the axis we have chosen is the center of mass itself no distance between 40 newton and the axis right also the force n will not cause any torque for the same reason right because it's also at the center of mass so we are left with only two forces that have that are distant away from the center of mass okay our chosen axis of rotation these will produce torques what kind of torques will this produce so if you consider this to be your axis point then 350 newton force which is act, which is acting downward vertically downward will cause the board to rotate in a clockwise motion while 500 newton force directed downwards about the center of mass will cause the board to rotate counterclockwise let's consider counterclockwise to be positive direction of torque which is a general method you can choose the other one that's up to you so what are the torques we have 1 due to 350 so 350 and that would be a negative torque because it's clockwise so 350 is the magnitude of the force times the distance away from the center of axis which is x x is we don't know what x is and then sine of theta what is theta theta is the is the angle between the force and the line joining let's use a different color the angle between the force and the line joining the force with the chosen axis okay this is 90 degrees so we have maximum torque because sine of 90 is 1 let me switch back to the original color because I'm not a dirty fellow yellow yellow dirty fellow anyways uh, this is a negative torque and then with that we add the counterclockwise torque produced by the 500 newton force 500 times 1.5 is also the angle is still again 90 degrees in this case so sine of 90 is just 1 and they sum to give me 0 so in the end we are looking to solve for x so we have the equation 350 times x equal minus 500 times 1.5 okay the minuses can be divided out and at the end of the day x becomes if you divide both sides by 350 x is 2.1 meters so the child with the weight 350 newtons should sit a distance of 2.1 meters from the center of mass of the board so that the board is still in balance and doesn't rotate about any uh, chosen axis you could have chosen this axis to be somewhere here or somewhere here it wouldn't have mattered I challenge you to try that method as well okay so this was a very basic example of how to work with balance and equilibrium 
in the future videos we will look at a more one more or two more detailed examples on this thank you very much